Howdy folks, this is round three of this week's Liberty MTG uh, FNM tournament. Um, I've got a couple other videos, so if you haven't seen one in rounds one and two, go ahead and check those out for sure. Uh, otherwise, I'm just going to be uh, playing an 80 card Yorian Companion Vivian's Arcbow deck. Uh, which has served me well so far, but no idea what our opponent's playing right now, so we might totally biff it. Uh, let's see what kind of hand we get. Uh, this is pretty okay. Um, being able to cast Arcbow and Uro soon enough, the Nightpack Ambush is pretty sweet. I'll go ahead and keep this hand. Yeah. Another Arcbow? Okay. Whatever. Cool thing about playing an Arcbow deck is that, um, uh, sure, we'll keep the land. Um, the duplicates don't matter. Having too many lands doesn't matter. Um, unlike a lot of other decks that Yorian would be a companion for, like, um, we can, our, our dead draws, we can still discard to the Arcbow to go and get other value. So, uh, that's pretty sweet. Only sweet if our opponent doesn't have a counter, though. Well, we have two Arcbows, so I guess it doesn't matter. Uh... We'll put that on the bottom. See if they have another counter spell or something like one. Okay. Okay. We are pretty okay with that. I think, uh, I think we're going to try to ramp along with them. Put that lotus field down just so that it's over there. So our opponent having two planes is not great for their ability to cast the Uro, their Uro, which we're thankful for. Another cool thing is that um, once they eventually escape Uro, we've got Dream Eaters. We can just bounce it back to their hand and make things take a bit longer. Okay, that's something. At this point, we'll probably just play Temple of Mystery to Scry and then hold up the Ambusher. Another Lotus Field. Interesting. Don't need another Uro right now. Cool. So we just cleanly get one of their lands. Pretty sweet. Elspeth conquers right there. That's fine. So Lotus Field is sweet because... Um, it helps us build up an escape pool for Uro while also giving us access to all five colors. Um, what do we want to do here, though? Probably want to bounce Nissa, I'm thinking. If we would have bounced, uh, hmm, if we would have just bounced our main phase, then it would have been difficult for, uh, for 
them to do anything. Um, hmm. Fairy makes things annoying. So inevitably our Dream Eater will get bounced here, but... Which means we get to bounce more of their things and whatnot. Um, hmm. So I think... We just cast our Uro here, probably. So if we say, how does this work? Blue, blue, sacrifice these two. Green, green, green. Exile, 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 all lands. <laughs> Go ahead and do that. Put this down. When oh, the arc still costs four, it's unfortunate. Um, hmm, we can't cast this. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, so let's see if he has any removal here. So annoying. All right. Now we'll just play the arc bow and see what we can scrounge up. Let's see if our opponent plays Nissa. Mm, I think it's so. What the worst thing that happens is we get to fairy bounced or Elspeth conquers the dead, but neither of these things can be played at instant speed, so. Just see what we can pull out here. Ooh, whiff. Ah, uh, upsetting. Yep. I think it's going to be hard for us to come back from that, probably. These Teferis are just nasty. Why is this yellow here? It's kind of weird. Does that mean it has summoning sickness? Okay, it's improbable that we're able to pull anything that actually helps us. Man, what a 
we and we had like a seven card dig whiff. How disappointing. play this for fun then concede okay all right so we don't let's see what do we not want hmm we want Dovin's vetoes We don't need those as much. Shifting ceratops we certainly want. This voracious great shark is not so relevant because creatures and artifacts are not going to be played. Definitely pull into shifting ceratops. Probably take out... Hmm. We like the Cavaliers, we like our Knight of Autumns, Lovestruck Beasts, probably fine, right? Like, we're happy if our opponent exiles a Lovestruck Beast. Hmm. Don't know how we feel about these Realm Cloaked Giants. Probably not great. Take out a Dream Eater. Take out... What else? Huh? Luminous Broodmoth is a little cute. But, hmm. Does Kenrith help us? We'll see how it is with just this. Probably should have put the fourth shifting ceratops in TBH, but. Okay, we'll say that's fine. Cool, Knight of Autumn's not bad. So we get to play Shifting Ceratops slightly ahead of the curve. Which is neat. So if he wanted to play Teferi this next turn, he just wouldn't be able to do a lot with it. Hoping we get another green or blue land. So it could have a shadow of the sky. Although if he's playing Nyssa, is that likely? I, I guess I'm not sure. An Uro. Wilderness Reclamation, Hollowed Fountain, Hold Up the Frilled Mystic, hope he doesn't have a dispute. We 
just try to counter that. Now we can draw with the Enclave. And turn. Even if we see a board clear or something, we can still play our Dream Eater and continue to chip in some damage. Okay. Go ahead and play Dream Eater here. So we get to surveil even though he makes the trawler hexproof. Um, okay. Alright, so we did fine without our Arkbow that time. Hmm. <laughs> take for seven does that seem likely mm. this holds back a dream trawler which is why we like it karuga we don't like as much we like shifting ceratops all right i think this one is anyone's game let's see if we get some ramp in our opening hand And that we do. Might not be the greatest. But at least if we get Cavalier of Dawn on the field, then we can Yorian to get him as well. Ooh, okay. Kiora is pretty nice. Whatever. You're going to play Cure this turn anyway. Dare Espel conquers Death Kiora, would he? We'll see. Growth Spiral. It's fine. Wow. Might really be rushing up to a uh, Dream Trawler, huh? Oh, wow. That Uro is going to be coming in hot, but we do have our Cavalier at the ready, so. We'll shock that in. We'll pretend like we're going to do something with the mana. Oh, well, we'll actually, yeah, we will just give it haste right now. Absolutely. Forgot that, that was an option. Land then Uro. Ooh, nope. Okay. Um interesting. I'm really glad that worked out that way, because Auto Tapper did not uh, work quite the way that I wanted it to. So 
attack these. Untap Lotus Field with Cura. Now whatever they do, we can respond to it at instant speed. Ha 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 ha. It's looking pretty good for us. So they are going to cast Uro, perhaps? We'll see if we can counter it. Lotus Field tapping for blue, that leaves up veto opportunities. So we can still veto during this first main phase. Okay. So I think what we're going to do here, even though we could get shattered, um, is just try to draw a bunch of cards. Exile, exile, exile. This also refreshes Cure's loyalty. Go ahead and play this. Draw. So we'll see what happens here. But we might just have lethal. Fingers crossed. Dream Trawler. Yeah, blue does hurt. Wow, they let me just destroy that. Maybe they have a shadow in their hand? So now we're just gonna play our arc bow. We're gonna untap this lotus field so we hold up a Dovin's veto. End the turn. Growth Spiral. Hmm. Let's see if they have any other options. Hydrate Crisis ain't nothing. How much does that heal them? Two? So we still win. That looks like it's it. Okay, cool, cool. All right. After that first game, I was definitely a little spooked. I did not think we would go so, um, or that things would go so well against like an actual meta deck. You know, Bant Ramp is a pretty big deal, or Bant Control. I, I guess I don't know the name of the deck. All the same, um, things went pretty well. So uh, be sure to tune in for the uh, round four finale. Uh, I'm three and zero, so we'll see if we can take it all the way. Uh, thanks so much, and see you soon.